This is the story of the one. As head of maintenance at a concert hall, he knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working, the HVAC is humming, and his facility shines. With Granger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24-7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Hashtag no music, no intro. We are live. Saints Block Party Podcast. Um, happy Easter for everybody. Smoke. Celebrate. He is risen. Um, change of plans. <laughs> <laughs> um change of plans in just regards to the show um originally we were going to have um a big fan of ours um a force in the entertainment industry uh Catherine Fisher joined us and there was a family emergency that she had to attend to and it, it, you know listen we more than anyone understands that life happens and life will life um so Catherine is eager to join the show. Um, We we are planning to reschedule it, but the show goes on. Uh, Shout out to everyone who's already in the chat. Um, Jasper, Mitch, Tony, London, Mark. um, We appreciate y'all. This is one of deader deader periods in the NFL right now. Nothing going on. Boom. Uh, Nothing. Nothing. I mean, and maybe for the Saints, what's up, what's up, Dante? And maybe for the Saints, that's that's for the best. Um, but since we got everyone's attention and everything, if you are wanting to attend the Saints Block Party Block Party Podcast Draft Party in New Orleans on April 25th, we are officially 25 days away from Ooh. the draft party to see what this team does in the draft. Are they going to? Whew. we'll see we'll see but if you're a patreon um please make sure you rsvp uh also just recently we started memberships through youtube 4.99 you become a member you get a membership on youtube it has all the perks of that of a patreon um attending the draft party going to um our meetups with the games and everything so whew. uh the same sign of kicker yeah. Uh, if you know if you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Um, as we are really trying to build build this thing on the the YouTube side of things. Uh, Tony said, it "Seems like no news is good news with the Saints this time of year." Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, always, some Jerry, shit. always, know. always. Uh, Jerry says, "What's good, fella? Happy Easter! Happy Easter to you too, Jerry." Um, you, G. So we, we, I mean, we'll we'll open it, open it up. Oh, uh, Hemi is fierce. Said the Saints signed a kicker. Who that? Uh, he they signed a kicker to like a three year deal from. Oh, where's he from? I'm even blanking on his name. It was just. Listen, I'll say this: the fact that they signed him to a three year deal. That stands out to me. Yes, thank you, Mitch from Ireland. Signed a kicker from Ireland. Um, three year deal. Uh, Charlie Smythe. Um, Smitey. Just saying, group group might about be able to be local. About the Smythe group, group out here, boy. <laughs> a three year deal? <laughs> Come on, bro. Like you don't you don't just give out three year deals just willy nilly. I mean, I'm sure you know they could cut him if you know. There's no, probably no guarantees or nothing, but I mean. I mean, it is what it is. It's competition for Groupie, bro. Like, period. You know, Groupie. Look, I said this about Groupie. He had he he had a shook. He had a shook last year, bro. Because you know there was some times. But I say overall, it's like a rookie kicker. I thought he, you know, he handled a lot of it well. Um, that said, I would not have went into this season with him like pit, written in right. pen. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, man. we bring the competition, bro. We'll see. You know what I'm saying? Who? One thing about kicker competition, you either get it or you don't. You either, you know what I'm saying? Well, you make the, kids at practice, you make it in a training camp, or you don't. You know what I'm saying? It's funny, too. It's like, it's, it feels like in a kicker. Oh, and uh, Jerry said uh, it's actually pronounced Smith and Smythe. I'm calling Smite. 
Miss no, no, it's, no, it's, it's all right, written in stone. <laughs> um, the jury. So here's the thing that annoyed me about Groupie as a kicker. And listen, I think you're right. I think he had as a rookie kicker overall was fine. Cost the Saints games, mm-hmm. yes, but I think it it was the inconsistency that we saw in the season with how Dennis Allen and the team treated Trevor Penning. Mm-hmm. And then the same that that same level didn't go to Groupie in my head. I'm like that, like this, like he costs games, <laughs> like straight up. Dennis Allen, who has been who has been trying to get in the playoffs for almost what five seasons, however long he's been coaching. Like if those if Groupie hits a couple of kicks in the season, maybe the Saints get in the playoffs. But he. It, at no point did Groupie's job ever feel like it was in right. doubt. Was there going to be a change of kicker? Right, Nothing. right, right. Which is crazy. I, like that's the thing. The, inc- the, the inconsistency. Just, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think uh, I mean Mike Triplett was talking about it. How you know staff was like, you know, we're going to ride it through with Groupie. You don't want to give up on a kicker so early, and you want to ride it through. And because they could, even some of the great kickers struggled early. You know, riding it through. I'm like. I agree. You know what I'm saying? I agree. <laughs> How about do that with some other players? Like <laughs> left tackle? Left, left tackle, tackle, maybe. That you maybe, traded maybe, picks. Maybe. I, that you traded I, picks to get? Like, can we do that? I don't know. No, yes. I, yeah, but, I understand. I, I'm saying yes. Allen has two years in. I'm saying the totality of his coaching career, going back to Oakland, he has never made the playoffs. <laughs> Just has not. Um, so all the point I was making is that had Groupie hit maybe a couple of kicks during the season, maybe that's a different story. Uh, shout out Wiki, uh, Hemi, uh, Heim, him is fear. I just heard Penning is working out. Underhill reported it. anywhere. Anyone know where he is working out? He said the name, uh, some, some big shot coach he's been working with. I don't, I, I, I could look it up, but I'm not about to spend time looking it up, but <laughs> it's good to hear that he's working out. Like he's taking it seriously. He's working on, he's working with like an old offensive line, like, guru or something so okay like oh yeah we'll duke, see, duke, bro. duke mayweather Merryweather. Duke mayweather mayweather uh, mayweather. yeah sorry, sorry sorry i missed your question uh how big is need at offensive line now um because if car gets hurt we're in trouble because peterman is terrible listen if car gets hurt run me my 2025 first number one overall pick run it please run it please <laughs> Please. I mean, that's one reason why I don't want to trade a future first, unless it's to go get a quarterback this year. Right. Because, because, like, because I, I do think, we I could do be think this, high, bro. <laughs> I do we think this quarterback high, class is is better than next year's quarterback class. Even like quarterback like four or five, I would. Yeah. I, that's what I, I, I would. I, I, would rate. I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea who's coming out next year. And, you know, those things can change. But, yeah, it, it seems like next year's class is booty. Um, Jerry. Oh, thank you for bringing this up, Jerry. I didn't want to uh, talk about this. He asked, "What are our thoughts on training camp moving to to Irvine, University of California, Irvine?" Um, it's a, listen. I I live in Southern California. Been here a long time, so it's a great opportunity for, I guess, us. You know, you know, my half of represent us as a podcast to to be out there as, yeah. as often as I can. Listen, I, I I work a full-time job, so I'm not I'm not gonna be at every training camp practice. I, I I don't even have the desire to be at every training camp practice. But um it's an opportunity uh to see the players and see the team um in person. Um hopefully get some really good uh pictures of the team and things like that. But in, in the totality of like what does it mean for like the Saints I just feel like if Dennis Allen doesn't change how training camp has been run, I don't think it really matters where training camp it is. Like it, it's just been it's been a very lax ish type of training camp setup since he's been head coach. Um, it's something that's been on Ryan's <coughs> our radar. It's the very first like not mandatory OTAs. It was voluntary, and just the the attendance just the attendance was just abysmal and it just felt weird to us. It felt yucky. Um, and I, I think that's a, the lack of attention to details is a huge issue of where this team lacks coaching wise. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so it's it's like if you're losing talent on the field, you're losing players or you're drafting players and those players aren't working out and you have like you don't have smart coaches that can pay attention to details it's not going to be you're not putting yourself in a position as a football team to like do well on the field on Sunday. Uh but I I do plan to host a couple of like so Southern California little like mini meetups for training camp during training camp. Um get Patreons together who are supporting us. We'll go to training camp together. We can go to Puesto, have the best filet mignon tacos, which are still the best tacos you'll ever have to this day that mm. is in Irvine. So it's that from that aspect is fun and it'll yeah. just be more engagement for for the podcast. Long answer, Jerry. Sorry about that. Uh what about you, Ryan? What do you, what do you think about training camp at Irvine? No, man, I don't I mirror your thoughts. I don't really have a hot take about it. Um, you know, we'll see. I, I, I'm interested to see if they're able to get good work out there uh, with a milder climate than we have, you know, in southeast right. Louisiana. But um, other than that, like it's a dope opportunity for you. And, you know, was, we got a big contingent of uh, podcast Huge, listeners in, in, in that area. So it'd be an awesome opportunity for us to get some, you know, get some meetups out there and, you know, have some fun. Um, huge, huge opportunity for, for us at the podcast. Um, wh- why is this? I'm sorry. I'm trying to get this. Um, oh, I get it now. Sorry, guys. Here's the, here's something I am going to try though. I am going to try again to get media credentials just for training camp. I just, I'm just, I'm just, just, I'm just, I'm just Either listen, either way we win. <laughs> Cause if they don't respond to us, it's okay. We'll, we'll talk about it on the show. But if, m- maybe they're feeling a little generous. Maybe they like, you know what? I'm tired of these damn Negroes just dra- dragging us on, on the podcast all the time. Like, well, let's just let's maybe they just a little, you know, little olive bread. Maybe to get a new intern up in there to, to filter emails and <laughs> you don't know. Just slip through, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, the funniest thing, speaking of like a new intern, could you imagine like a new intern like messes up and like gives us, gives me a credential and then like the team finds out about it? <laughs> Fire! You did what? <laughs> Fire! What? <laughs> they try to rescind the credentials and like, no, nah, don't send it back. Send it. it was a mistake. Um, Let's see. Uh, How did Chase Young surgery go? You know what, Jasper? Don't know. I mean, that's those are things that we're just not privy to. Um, but I think it's a cautionary tale, just paying attention to Ryan Ramchek, and just in that. So any sur any surgery is a risk, whether you're playing football or not. Like anytime you go under anesthesia and someone is cutting into your body, it's a risk. And no one's ever, no one will know how your a, bo- a human's body is going to respond to a surgery. Um, Ryan Ramchek is a cautionary tale. He got he got knee surgery, knee surgery, and that is not as I would probably just assume not as invasive as neck surgery. And the surgery he got it, and he hasn't bounced back from it. Now he potentially he's maybe going to miss a season, and maybe he have to retire. Like so I mean, he has a degener- well. he has a degenerative knee, you know. The, knee, come on, the ligament and joint stuff in between his knee is degrading. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it won't come back. It's gone. It's not coming back. So these surgeries are just trying to find ways to put some duct tape on it and, you know, maybe get through a season or two. But, you know, that the Ram check of 2017, 18, you know, oh. though, though, my dude gone, man. Unfortunately, because he was gone, on a, He was low key. On an early Hall, Hall of Fame, fame tra- trajectory, Hall of Fame trajectory, all pros and Absolutely stuff like was. that that early. Ah, Absolutely was. It sucks, man. It sucks. It sucks. AK was AK was too. Michael Tom. Anyway, oh. uh, Jerry says, "Why are y'all always expecting the worst to happen? Is it because of Da and Mickey?" Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it, here's the crazy part. I remember Ryan and I. Did a podcast after the Saints started two and zero, and we were like, "Y'all, why are the fa- why are the fans just just unhappy? Like, it's hard to be two and zero in the NFL." So, as pessimistic as we can be at times, and especially fast forward to how the season ended and how the season played out, um, when the Saints are doing well, we have no we want to give them credit because you know what we want them to win. That helps with 
everything. It helps with us as fans, just being teams winning. It helps with engagement. People want to watch content, want to listen to content more when the team's winning That's as fair. opposed to the team not winning. So if anything, like from just a business monetarily perspective, we would love for the Saints to be good. And we don't care if, if DA is at the helm of when it's happening. Right. But historically, we have a head coach that's 24 and, 24 and 46. That's a fact. The worst head coaches that's in the it. league. And a GM who I'm uh, just not confident about right now. I mean, uh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I, I know that ain't Luke in here. No, that, no, that ain't Luke. K, 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 Luke in this bitch. <laughs> um, I, it's, it's funny. I asked Luke. I DM Luke a couple of days ago. I asked him if he's going to come to the draft party. And you know, Luke, Luke always got a, uh, got a reason why he uh, – I say this jokingly because he, he did make a detour when we were in Houston. Just he did, but just, He did. Um, much love. Uh, Eric Bass said, I'm here for the RuPaul's Drag Race 13 – episode 13 review. I don't know if we'll go that far. Also, next time – Eric, next time you come you come down to Southern California, you and I will go to Hamburger Mary's, which is a, dra- uh, a they have a outstanding drag show brunch in West Hollywood. Hilarious, entertaining. Let's let's do it. I, I went there for a coworker's <sighs> birthday brunch, and absolutely great, fantastic time. But since we're talking about reality shows, uh, we're gonna de- de- we're gonna make a little detour from the Saints real quick. Can we talk about Love is Wine season six? I'm on I'm on episode seven. We're on episode seven. Please don't spoil anything for me, Ryan. Seven. So where you at in the story? They, that's when they out the, they, out uh, the they, they, they just they just got to the to the where they live in, right? Oh, okay. oh yeah. The, you the, moved along. Okay. okay. I, I I have I have never seen an individual mess up a situation as much as Jimmy has. With I, I, I'm not over it, Ryan. I'm not over it, and and he's clearly not into Chelsea. Do you saw it, right? Like, I know you saw it, right? Oh, <laughs> bro, when when they was at the beach, and the, one of the girls asked Jimmy, like, oh, like you know how you know how are things you know with you and <coughs> Chelsea? And he's like, oh, he like his he start started shaking his head. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this big lie. You can see it, big man. Life. She was like. It, like you could just you could just tell you know what I'm saying you could tell, you could tell man. man you could tell and bro like when uh what's a what's old girl the one that other girl that was into him the pretty one um Jessica Jessica she rung him up she rung him up when she, <laughs> she she cooked him bro I was like ooh she said wait till you see wait till you see <laughs> yeah. I was like man listen and it's not that old girl um. Is you know, Chelsea ugly or nothing? It's just you know, pick, 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 Megan Fox. Pick, pick, pick. And you know they had some other ones on there, like uh, the Maga chick. Um, oh, oh, Sarah Ann. Yeah, she, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like I'm okay. <laughs> ah, hey, man, you gonna see anyway? Um, <laughs> but it's crazy. Hit like Jimmy, man. Jimmy was slow looking ass, bro. He had. He had him coming after him, bro. I was like, "Damn!" I don't know if it was that a voice. It's McCaffrey. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's a trip though, because I remember a couple of weeks ago you had tweeted, "Love is not blind." I was like, "It's pretty much what the show proves." Like it's. it's oh, <laughs> listen, I, 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 Jay has told me about the show, and I, I, I saw like the last episode of like the Sweden, the Sweden, uh, season. And everyone was talking about you know the new season, season six, and I was like, all right, I'll just I'll I'll take a peek. I've already, already tip, dipped a toe into ninety day fiance. Now I'm just 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 locked in. I was like, I don't want to get even Greg Rosenthal bro. watching. You know Greg Rosenthal watching. You know Greg Greg watching Love Is Blind. Oh, let me I got text. We might have to do a Love Is Blind uh, ATF <laughs> SBP. Let's episode. do it, man. Let's do it. <laughs> um, sorry guys. Uh, <laughs> Mark said, "Why Jerry trying to beef with people?" <laughs> Jared Beast. <laughs> what is going on? Um, hold on. Uh, Jasper says, "Do y'all think if this season is not what what is expected, do DA get another year after this one because of all the turnover on the offensive side? The excuse is built in, built in, bro, built in, and it just seems like listening to Mickey Loomis uh, speak at the owners' meeting. 
just something to, about the tenor, the way he's talking. He, he's not talking like play off, like we're going to win. Like he didn't, I didn't hear that overconfident Mickey. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was just mm. more like it's kind of where we are right now and we just kind of working ourselves through it. So it wouldn't really shock me if they kind of keep hold on to DA as they go through this cap saving process, you know, cap reclamation, uh, working through some of the age in a roster. It wouldn't surprise me if they just kind of hold on to DA to do that. I don't like that idea, um, but it wouldn't surprise yeah. me if they approached it that way. I'm just like, bro, like you're overthinking it. If if that's not your head coach, you move on. You move on. Um, you do. Uh, our Ron in the chat says he was nine and eight. He was nine and eight last year. Seven and ten the year before. Seems to be improving. <laughs> I love you, bro. I appreciate you. Is this is this Mickey Loomis? Is this, in the chat? Like, I was, I'm called by Scott Tillis. He, he is twenty four and forty six all time. He went nine and eight in the easiest division of football with having one of the most easiest schedules historically, almost of all of football. I mean, super easy. That got, I got easier as the season went along. I suggest go look up on YouTube. Watch, we'll finish right. watching this first. Then after you watch this, go look up <laughs> uh, Football Analysis. I think it's his channel. Football Analysis. And he did analysis of the 20. He's not a Saints fan, just a football guy. He analyzed the 2023 season of the Saints. Probably the most fairest, mm. fairest like a, a, uh, analysis of the Saints season I've seen from like a person that's not a Saints fan. I mean, he, g- he gave props what they would do, and he pinpointed a lot of stuff. I thought he watched our podcast. I'm like, bro, this dude must have been watching our podcast. He was, <laughs> he was on it, bro. And it was just refreshing to hear somebody that's not in our orbit that, that's right. looking from a distance and then watching film and all that stuff. They're seeing this not, lot, not in our echo chamber. Right. Not in our echo chamber. They're seeing the same issues, man. Like it if you're just looking at the win laws record, which is not impressive either, but if you just looking at that, nah, bro, you're missing the whole story, man. Missing it, bro. Um, I've been my, one of my things I've been saying is that it's not about it's not about the end results, it's about how you get there. Like it's it's how you get there. And the way that the Saints have gotten there has just it's it's been some questions. Been some questions. Um, I did want to do so with draft season coming up. You know, me and Jay do this project every year. They've been doing it for like the last three years, where we are ma- we match prospects, ma- uh, their athletic profiles to the Saints' athletic profile, only dating back to two thousand and six. Please, please know that's only dates back to two thousand and six. Um, and so I just for the podcast, just thinking of things we we needed to talk about. Uh, Luke said, "Would love for us to get hard knocks." Shut your mouth! Absolutely not. No, no, no. Thank you. Um, but I wanted to go back to last year's and just kind of just peek and see. No, no. Oh yeah, verse is one hundred percent going to be on this. List. We haven't. We did have. We haven't started yet. We're gonna. We're gonna do it, and then we're gonna do a Patreon only or YouTube membership only live show about it. We're going to set it up where if you're a Patreon or you're a YouTube live member, you will see the live show that we're going to do on the prospect matching data. I'm going to write a football article. Mm. I've done it in a while. And that's only going to be Patreon only or YouTube membership only. So you're going to see for this upcoming draft class that's going to take place in 25 days, what players meet the Saints criteria in terms of their their, their matching prospect. The thing that always kind of blows me away when we do this exercise is how many players that match like it's such a cheat sheet to give you an idea of who the saints may look to um so i'm gonna share my screen okay share my screen y'all can see it okay so dt a player that was better than I, I, I deleted the the data because that's that's at this point that's coming you know that's coming like kind of trademark ish so I deleted the the, the stats but player that they drafted in the first round Brian Brice he he didn't meet he not only met their athletic profile but he was an outlier of being 
better than the athletic profile. So essentially meaning he's just an athletic freak of where they typically draft a DT or excuse me, defensive tackle. He's that. He was that and more. Boom. Saints drafted him in the first round. Um, safety. Another player that met all their metrics. Jordan Howden. Drafted in the fifth round. Um, scrolling down, they didn't draft a tight end. A.T. Perry. So just if you're looking at this, A.T. Perry was on their list of um, limited metrics, which means that he met most of their athletic profile. There could have been a category here or there that either the player didn't meet or maybe they didn't do a certain drill. Like maybe they didn't run three cone or they didn't whatever. Um, but A.T. Perry on the list got drafted. Uh, I know Kendra Miller was hurt, so he wouldn't have had any measurables. And I think that's pretty much it. Oh, sorry. not That's not it. Nick Solovarde. Limited metrics. Got drafted. It literally is a, a cheat sheet. There's a reason why. The only player that I was confused of why isn't he on here is, is Isaiah Foskey. And I, I, I could go back and figure out why he's not. Um, but he's not on here. But for the most part, it gives you just a a look and a cheat sheet of what to expect of what the Saints are going to do um, upcoming in this in the draft when they do it. I would like to, uh, if it's possible, to look at who was drafted that were that met criteria um, since 2016 and who wasn't, like who didn't meet any mm. of the criteria and was still drafted. I'm just curious to see, you know. Yeah. We could have a lot of oh, fun okay. with that. I see what you're yeah. A lot of it. A lot of it. Uh sorry. Let's let's catch up on the chat. Let's see. Uh yes. Verse is gonna be on the list for sure. Luke sure. said he wants drama. You know, you you want discrimination, Luke. Um <laughs> uh, there's a lot going on with the Saints. Mickey training draft capital to Sean Payton leaving. Then the trade with the Eagles hurt a lot. Kicking the can down the road caught up with the Saints. COVID nineteen. I think we got to get rid of the narrative that kicking the can caught up with the Saints. What what caught up with the Saints is bad drafting and bad self scouting and bad head coach. It's it's lazy. Kicking the can. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> just, just, just just drives him crazy. <laughs> drives me crazy, bro. Because it's, it's such, it's the go-to line, and I hear it everywhere. And I kick the can. Everywhere. And I kick the can. And I kick the can. What can? Like, what can are you kicking? And, and I get it. It's I get it. Like, I understand, you know, I understand the meaning of the term and what people mean by it. But I think they just, I think they get confused, bro. Like, it's not. It's not moving depth. Educate. It's, it's educate them. Educate them. It's, a, it's a podcast. Educate them, right? We got people in the chat right now that need to be educated. You literally talk, Pro- professor, you, professor Ryan, talk to him. You're talking about a ledger, a uh, accounting book. It's just accounting. So if I if I sign a player today for five years, ten million a year, I have a choice. I could pay him ten million per year for five years. And put ten million on the salary cap each year. Ten million, ten million, ten million. You know, some teams do this, but you don't have to, because the salary cap is it's not it's not etched in stone. Like it's it's fungible. Right. You know what I'm saying? I could I could put one million in salary oh. cap charge this year and pay him ten million in cash, but only account for one million. Now, what that means. Mm. You take the rest, multiply it into five, and spread it out. So the cap charge increases you know, 12 million second year, 15 million third year. It increases by a certain amount over that time. And it's just the cap charge. Now, people will say, well, that means by the final year, the cap charge, his cap charge is going to be like 25 million. Then what are you going to do? You got to cut players. Well, no, you can still sign players. You just have to sign them. Doing the same thing. (laughs) Same thing. And you could just keep going. It's not like you're going out of business next year or you got to go into liquidation or go into bankruptcy. This is the NFL. It's the the revenue is shared across the board. You could be the worst team 
win one game a season, have no fans come in your building, and everybody gets the same check, all 32 same. teams. Now, I mean, now, now as far as, like, stadium resume and all that, that counts differently. You know what I'm saying? But as far as, like, the check that every team gets every year that's cut between the players and the franchise, that everybody gets that check, no matter what your performance is. And that's what's used to calculate the salary cap. So it's just it's just lazy analysis to me. And that's not me saying uh, that the salary cap doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? It does matter. It does factor in the decisions you have to make. Absolutely does. But it's just not the uh hindrance that some people make it is. Uh hemisphere said kicking the can meeting playing paying players even when they are retired or on another team. You're that not paying them. The books. You paid them already. You paid them already. The cash is gone. So gone. you're just, it's just the accounting. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just the accounting that's still on the books. But you paid them already. So it's not like you, you're you still paying. I, I, we like to say that. I say it sometimes. Like, yeah, we still paying Jerry's Bird. Like, I joke about <laughs> that sometimes, too. But it's just the accounting. And so it's right. not preventing you from, A, signing new players. It's not preventing you from nope. uh, extending players. It's not preventing you from doing anything you want to do with the caveat of if the owner is willing and ca- and is. has the cash available to do it. That's the number one because caveat. We, because the way that the Saints operate their cap is that most often than not, Gail Benson is signing, like, is paying money out of pocket, like, right then and there, especially how they do huge signing bonuses yes. and blah, blah, blah. That is money coming from her pocketbook. Her satchel, her little help hands her the, the, the thing that she refers to as a help hands a little, yes. and she writes the check. That is coming out of her account immediately, straight up. Most owners, listen, I we can we can complain about a lot of things for the Saints, a lot. But one thing, as even if their process has been terrible, their decision making, all that's been bad. You cannot discredit them for at least trying oh. they have tried to be Try. competitive they have really? tried to win they've made some terrible decisions and some bad decisions but when you 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 can't do that if you don't have an owner that's willing to put up the money immediately you can't do it it's impossible that they, they literally signed Derek Carr last season over the cap they were over the cap yeah. they were over the cap starting last off season and signed Derek Carr terrible decision and, but it's, the decision was terrible, not because they were over the cap and they signed they signed a quarterback. Who they th- it was the, who they chose to pay. You know what I'm saying? It was the evaluation that was the problem. Right. Um, so it just it just goes to show is they are not like now they choose to be in this situation because as Mickey Loomis said, when the pandemic happened, that changed everything. I mean, for the first time in NFL history, stadiums were empty. So that. That was a lot of revenue not coming in. You know, they they froze the calorie cap for the first time, like ever. Um, it was it was crazy. Ever. So it was flat. Yep. It was flat cap. So it was a it was a different situation. And that when Kai Harley does his projections three to four or five years out, he's projecting that there's okay, there's a 10, 15, 20 percent increase in the cap based on the negotiations they had with the media companies. He couldn't do that. The the pandemic threw a monkey wrench in that whole plan. So now they're trying to reevaluate. Plus, I think I think Gail just like, man, look, I'm paying for the Pelicans. I'm paying, I got I got the, the beer brewery. She going through some stuff with the with the uh, auto dealership. She just trying. She like, look, I'm not Uh-oh. spending no more money on quarterbacks. This bad big, product. This on bad product. I'm not. I'm not doing it. That's my theory. I have no proof of, it, but. That's my theory. So they got to figure it out. You know, they got to figure it out. And the only way that you become or you can be a good, just a good team, if you're not spending a lot, <clears throat> is you have to hit on young got to. players. It's crucial, you bro. You have to hit on young players. That's why this draft is so, so pivotal. You made a great analogy comparing this upcoming draft class not saying, well, it would be lovely if this draft class was another 2017 draft class, but just just the importance of it, of just 
down seasons and I know they were nine and whatever, nine and eight this year, blah, blah, but they didn't make the playoffs. You're coming off two down seasons. And if you look back, even, you know, Sean, you know, Sean Payton before he left his last season, didn't make the playoffs. You, you this, this draft class, this draft is crucial, Ryan. Crucial, it man. is crucial. Um, one to ask you this question. I know we texted about it, but first time we kind of talked about it on the show. This buzz, buzz, buzz about JJ McCarthy going two overall. Mm. Did it see? Did it seem a little legitimate too, bro? I, I can't believe it, Adam. I just, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It's one of the most fascinating <laughs> stories going into the draft. It's like what? It's the answer I'm waiting on because it's gonna, it's gonna tell me about media coverage during the draft. Versus reality, mm. you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like that's mm-hmm. that's just I'm just fascinated to find out. Like I watched them, I watched them, you watched them. Everybody, we we have long conversations in the Discord. Come a Patreon if you want to jump in that Discord because we'd be cutting up in there. Long conversations about it, or 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 you or YouTube membership, or YouTube membership. It's so fascinating because even me, I I watch I watch some people that I really uh, appreciate talk about them and some that I appreciate I watch people that I appreciate talk about them some still like he's such a polarizing prospect man and I could he personally is, see things that the NFL would like I could see it like I could see okay, oh I could too like there's some things, I could too there's some things that would like but top 10 top 5 nah top 2 overall ah ah I mean, that's a projection, bro. That's more of a projection than Andy Richardson. Because at least with, like, Andy Richardson, even though he didn't have uh, the the amount of snaps played and stuff like that. He's a, he's a freak. He's an Olympic-level athlete. Olympic level. So at least, like, I'm, at least I'm like, shit, at least I'm, we're going to be able to do something. We're going to be able to do something. <laughs> so at least I get that with him. Not only does he not really have the snaps, but it's like, the arm strength is like it's not bad, what, but what, it's like here's, here, here's my question: What does he do great? What does JJ McCarthy do great? I can't answer. <laughs> he's a great human, and he wins. <laughs> like, <what's the laughs> oh wait, I mean, and he's white. Oh, oh that too. Oh, we, we talk, oh, oh we, okay. We shouldn't be the one of. <sighs> it's it's crazy. It's but the the domino effect if that London said efficiency. I mean, it, he's efficient. He's efficient because he doesn't throw the ball a lot. But so, even like, even when ef- efficiency is like, there's some games like I can't remember the game he threw like two pick sixes. It's like I don't know, like is that efficient? Like I don't know, bro. Like I, <laughs> it's just like I need him to be stellar at something. There's nothing I can look at and say, man, he's stellar at this. But there's a lot I can look. At. I can look at it and squint and be like, man, there's something I could build off, you know, and. It's like a day two guy to me. He's a day two guy that you bring in, you know, that I think if you're a good team and you could believe you believe in your defense, you got a run game, that you could start with him and, you know, spoon feed him and he could become a solid quarterback for you and probably start games, you know. But this projection of top two, like about top ten, top ten, top fifteen, this is a franchise quarterback. I'm gonna build around franchise. And I don't want him to look back. I don't want to have to look back at the draft this guy. I can't do that with JJ. Who would you rather have, JJ McCarthy or Bo Nix? Bo Nix, bro. I'm going with Bo Nix, man. And like, I I got a lot of problems with Bo Nix. I got a lot of problems with him. But I will say this: like, I could see, like, watching him at Oregon, I could see what he brings to the table. Um, yes. And I mentioned it to you just on texting. He was, you know, he was on a podcast with uh, Greg Cosell. And uh, Doug Farrar, your buddy. Um, <laughs> and they had him on the whole podcast, and they talking football, football. They talking. This ain't like no fluff piece and stuff. Yeah. They talking Ball. deep X and O's. And I was like, man, Bo Nix impressive, bro. Like, And you could tell he enjoyed talking about it. You could tell that's what gets him going. And he talked about him wanting to be a – uh, a high school head coach after he's done with playing football and stuff like that. It's a dude that loves football. Like so just from that aspect of it, I'm like, okay, that's somebody I could work with. And you know, he has and he's not like a bum, you know what I'm saying? Like dude dude got a nice game. Um 
Luke said Bo Nix can sell you life insurance and throw 20 touchdowns. <laughs> I probably so. Get, get you a man that could do both. I, I wonder, especially the football intelligence thing, I wonder, I think you said it perfectly. I'm so more interested in, like, every other team's draft strategy. Yep. <laughs> Super like, I, I, know, I, know what, I know what the outcome is for us more. Like, I already I, know, I, bro. I already know. Got got a, a nice look at uh, uh Waga. Got a nice look at Olu. Oh. Just, just, got, just, just, <laughs> just, 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 for the, just for the jersey, bro. Just for the jersey. Wake me up, man. Just the jersey. Just wake me up, bro. <laughs> <sighs> I was, um, Mark put in the Discord. It was the the ESPN article. I think Captain Terrell did kind of just reviewing like players on the offense that have left, players on the offense that are um, got brought in and in, in the free agency so far and in the off season. And I was just looking at like the just reading down and it was just like, can we, like you said, can we get some juice? Can we get some, 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 some juice? Bro? <laughs> that's I was, I was like. Get a, get a Jessica up in there. Stop, stop, stop. AD? Get an AD up in there? Stop. Something. Um, Dante said, do we know where JJ was January 6th? Uh, I mean, JJ, JJ the type that was just chilling at home. Like, he called people to do that for him. Like, that's, a, that's the type of money JJ got. Um, he said, no, I'm not. I won't be there, but I support you. Um, <laughs> you said car picked him up. Uh... Luke, uh, shout out to the camera and all audio quality. Y'all on your back for sure. Thank you, Luke. Appreciate it. Uh, it's, you know, done glowed up a little bit. Done glowed up a little bit. I can improve. I mean, listen, we'll get there. We're going to get there. We'll, we'll get there. We're going to get there. We're not, we're not worried about it. Um, com slash St. Spot. St. <laughs> Black Party. <laughs> we're going to get there. There it is. There it is. Chat, we have, I want to say we're going to have like maybe 10 minutes before we, we wrap up. Um, what of course, questions man, do you yeah. have? I don't say yeah, anything. Lo- lo- love is blind. Boeing. Life. Philosophy. Lo- love, is bl- love is blind. Um, <laughs> love is blind, right? We just got to do an episode, bro. Fuck it. We just got to do We do, bro. <laughs> You should have you should have seen me yell at the TV when he the whole when they're in the pod and and, and Jim, uh, when Jim, I was like Jimmy don't fuck this up bro I said oh, don't don't mess it up don't mess it up don't do it I, I just felt I felt it felt it coming because <laughs> his his whole facial everything changed when Jessica said she had a kid everything changed. oh bro you saw it, it was like it was it like it was like the the life just went so out of it. of it bro like damn bro you know. You do realize <laughs> said Angel Reese versus Caitlyn Carter in my Super Bowl. <laughs> and you know what? He joking. He joking. But if you know them races, boy, they Ooh-wee. all kind of in words getting spit. <laughs> oh, you know it. Uh, Luke said, "For love is blind, are the contestants blind? No, they're not blind, <laughs> but they like." <laughs> What? Looks <laughs> at No, Netflix. I need blind people. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Like that would right. right. You don't need po- you, you don't need pods. <laughs> Stevie Wonder. Corey actually. said. Well, I mean, Stevie can see anyway. Uh, Clay's friend said. Corey said. Clay's friend said. Ad doesn't have a job. Whoa, whoa, Corey, Corey. I, I'm on episode seven. Take time out. I don't want to get spoiled. I don't want to get spoiled. I, I'm enjoying the ride. Can we t- look? I want to talk about this real quick. I can't stand Kenneth. I was I was on board with Kenneth. His whole thing changed. Was he the one that came in with the list? No, that was Matt. Oh, oh. no, Kenneth. Kenneth is the 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 black twenty five year old principal that looked like he's oh born. man with the big hips. That boy, I, I'm like 25. Where? 
<laughs> he got a twenty-five-year-old principal. Kidding me? Kidding me? The micro braids. Lord, man. Oh, like Britney, su- Britney's such a sweetheart, and they and they Sweet in the house, and this nigga's on his in his us, on his phone. It is driving me up a wall, Ryan. <laughs> what, what were you? What did the last one you saw with her? With her and him? I'm, that's the one I'm in right now. There, he's just on his phone, on his phone. She's trying to like organize, and it's 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 driving. Me checked right. out. He just it's driving completely me. checked out. And oh, man, he's um, such a kind artist to me, bro. And the, the crazy thing is, I like I, I told Jay, I was like, man, like I ain't got to worry about Kenneth and Brittany. Like they they good, they good. And that's how they I came was off wrong. At first, I was yeah. wrong. Yeah. Right? Uh, sorry, sorry, guys. We're just gonna have to do. Have y'all seen this fridge? <laughs> Not a damn thing with the fridge. <laughs> Although I will say, as a as a bachelor man, that didn't surprise me at all. Like not even a little bit. Mm-hmm. Bayou said, "Let's talk opening week in in baseball. How can I remove someone from boy? I, I will play." <laughs> My dog, but I will block you right now. Ask me about some damn baseball, bro. Brock said only seven months until baseball is over. I'll say this about you. I am hopeful hopeful to hopefully get like a, a county discount to a Dodgers game so I can see Otani betting on some games live and I, actually just I go will say this. It. As much as I hate baseball, hate watching it on TV, going to a baseball game is fun. Always fun. I, I enjoy I, it. I just I, I, I can't. Bro. I, don't, I, I enjoy it, bro. Or just even like your my wife, dad. He used to play uh, baseball. I like, just go and see his little games. You know what I'm saying? I, I enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Get some nachos. Uh, uh, Luke said, "I'm praying that Otani betting scandal is actually him. The translator is a fall guy. Would be must see TV, bro. I really think that's what it is. I, I, I that's that's my conspiracy theory." I, I think Otani was the one betting, and the the translator is just the the ball guy. <laughs> That's a crazy story. Which is a which is a huge scandal if you just really sit back and think about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sherm said, "Got to get y'all to a Padres baseball game." So I have heard fun fun fact: uh, we won tickets to a Padres game at an auction a couple of months ago. For I believe it's four tickets, Sherm. So we'll we'll figure something out. We'll make a make a trip down there uh, to catch the Padres game. Um, five, five, six more minutes. Any, any questions? Uh, Shahid went to the Padres game yesterday. Breeze was I there mean, too. Huh? He was, he was, he was, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying this. Luke trying to get Luke trying to get me canceled. I'm not saying that. I'm, I am not saying that. <laughs> I, you, I, I. I I, I'm, I'll text it to you, Ryan. I'm not, I'm not going to get canceled. Not not on not on Good Friday. Not on, or sorry, not on Easter. I'm not getting canceled on Easter. Mm. Luke's, Luke's wild cell. Um, but also, yes, you, you are you are you are right. <laughs> not not disagree with you. Um, I'll ask you this, Ryan. Am I ready? Am I ready to see the episode when Jimmy meets Jessica? Am I ready? Am I ready to see it? Like, is it? It's gonna be interesting. I'll just say that much. It's gonna be interesting. I know, I know he gonna feel. I know he gonna feel like a big dummy. Big dummy. I ain't gonna say that. Um, no. Okay. <laughs> Not to say, bro, get Luke out of here. I can't say it. I I'm not gonna. Can't, I'm not gonna say it out loud. I'm, I'm just gonna text Ryan after the live stream is over. Uh. Anyhow, we got up to like. 30, almost close to like 40 concurrent viewers. Wow. Uh, we're, we're, right now we're at 30. Oh, you yeah. still, man. Thank um, you. For, for sure. Um, incredible. We hope, you know, if Easter is something that you celebrate, that you had a wonderful Easter. Um, you know, I went, you know, me, family went to church, church mm. this morning, you know, got, got the good word and just kind of just after that, just been, excuse me, hanging out, relaxing. Um, and you know, just fan, enjoying man. each other. Nothing like it. We went out. Uh, we went man. to New Orleans yesterday. My wife, uh, my, my father-in-law, he had his birthday. And we just all got together at Grandma's house, you know, 
ate, you know, sang happy birthday. Yo. She had food, barbecue chicken, fried chicken, baked oh, macaroni, tater yeah. salad, huh. drinks. Mm-hmm. Man, we just just enjoying Ooh. ourselves, bro. Like, that's all I need, that, man. That, ain't nothing like home. None ain't nothing like, like home. Nothing like it, bro. Uh, Tony said, any particular favorite Easter candy? Hmm. Man, all you just give me a a, a Reese's cup shaped in oh, the man. shape of an Easter bunny, bro. Can't like, go wrong with I'm, that. I'm simple. I always love uh, I love decorating um ball days. I used to love doing that as a kid. Um, favorite candy. Appreciate you, Dante. I, I I bring I bring that suit out every so often, maybe once or twice a year. But obviously, it was Easter, so I had to, yeah, had fresh, to bring bro. it out. Had the vest on Appreciate under it too. That. Yeah, the best. The on, the only Louis Vuitton thing I, I own is that is that tie because I I. So I remember when you got it. Then I pro- yeah, it, that was kind of kind of honors my mom a little bit because she helped me get it um, in her passing. Get out of here, peeps, Corey, peeps. Um, Luke said my aunt made a mac- macaroni salad instead of mac and cheese crumble. Yeah, I mean, I mean, she's she's a white aunt, Luke. Like, what what do you expect what's, her to make? What's like, in she- the macaroni salad? Though? Like, my 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 grandma, my wife, Ugh. my wife grandma. She got the she got the noodles, shrimp, cheese, uh, onions, ham, bacon. Got the white sauce. Oh man, just fire. Boy, like shit. Eggs, no. eggs sleep, bro. Tony said, I can't be around Reese's peanut butter eggs without adult supervision. Go, man. Yeah, I, 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 I get it, bro. I get it. Um, We will be back this upcoming week talking about what? I have no idea. I really haven't. We, we just might do a whole Love is Bond episode because we have nothing to talk about right now. Could we think about something? <laughs> Let's say a big back hour. <laughs> Yes, I could do two hours on Big Bang. And then, <laughs> then I'm cutting back like I'm on a diet too. So all I think about is food. Now, nah, bro, I'm like, man, can we? Can we uh, a, a, a Big Back, a Big Back women episode? We just be just in hell, bro. All right, Um. Uh. But we'll 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 be back this upcoming week. Uh. I hope hope everything. With Catherine's is, is okay because uh, we're gonna we plan to hopefully have her on next Sunday, and then please, 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 if you're in the chat, if you're not either a Patreon, if you're not a YouTube member, uh, four ninety nine, become one because you are not gonna want to miss our prospect matching data episode. Um, it's gonna be a private, not not a not a stripper private, but a private live show for just the Patreons, just the YouTube memberships. Um, if you don't want to watch the show and you just want to have that article when it is posted it's just going to be something that is posted just to patreons or if you are a youtube member um and get a youtube membership you'll have access to it but i will tell you uh, this is what we did last year at the draft party i made copies of the prospect matching data from last year i'm sorry yeah last year and just laminated them front and back and we just had them at the tables just Man, like okay, please put list. that shit in Excel next time, bro. Please. <laughs> Why? I like. I'm a data guy, bro. I like columns, and I like to see Excel. I like. I like it. Landscape. You know what I'm saying? Like, give me, give me landscape, brother. Please. Okay. Hurt. <laughs> Hurt. <Heard. laughs> Brian said the private shows are text only. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> Uh, but thank y'all. If here, here's something, if you're a part of the Discord, if you have any just some ideas you have for for episodes upcoming, just throw them in there because there there really is, is nothing happening. We could go back and do like some, you know, uh, reviewing like Shahi's 2023 season, or reviewing you know At Perry. You know, I, I would I would just let London do the fuck At Perry episode, but. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all so much. We appreciate y'all for hopping on, joining us on a Sunday Easter night and just spending time and just cutting up with us. Kind of on short notice, but all love as always. But we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We will be back this upcoming week. Don't know what day yet, but we'll be back up this coming week talking about something. Don't know football related? Maybe. We'll see. But something. Um, 
but we will see you guys see y'all soon thank y'all we love y'all with that we're out peace